What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 139 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today I have the start of our Champions League campaign where we will be taking on FC Porto. It's going to be the second seed versus the first seed and uh, hopefully we can come away with a good result. Of course if you missed last episode go check it out. We talked about all the new stuff for this the 20th season of this series. And um, yeah, I'm kind of excited just to get into today's game, if I'm honest. So um, that's what we're going to do. I think we're also going to do the Everton game today, so it's going to be a bit of a double header. And uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it, because as I said, it's been, what, three or four days since the last game? And um, not too much has changed. Anyway, in terms of our team for taking on Porto today, decided that we're going to go with the wider system today. One of the big reasons behind this being is the fact that Mosca is out injured, so there isn't this big pressure on me to try and facilitate a shape that kind of has two strikers in it. As a result, uh, we're going to change things up. We're going to try and stretch Porto a little bit wider. In terms of our team, well, it's got Ludwig Young in goal. Uh, perhaps the weak link in our first team, uh, if, if attributes were anything to go by. But I still think he's a very, very good player, the 30-year-old. He's kind of been a, just such a mainstay of the team at this point, And he just performs so well. Uh, I do believe this is now his 11th season at the club. So a really impressive turnout by him. Pretty much made an appearance every single year as well. Uh, so good to have him back again for another year. A left back for today's game, we are going to be going with Graffite or Graphite. Um, unfortunately, of course, if you watched last episode, you'll know Cabasele, our normal for first choice left back, um, got injured. He's only out for a few weeks. But as a result, Graffite going to come into the side. This guy, I really like him. Great player, 26 years old. Getting close as well to becoming a Gibraltarian national team player. So that could be kind of exciting. Just two years left for that. So I'm uh, hoping he'll stick around. A centre back for today's game, we of course go with Jorge Assad, the Argentine. Argentine international and alongside him we go with of course the one the only Mustafa so uh, a really good centre-back partnership there hopefully those guys can give us the kind of performance we expect from them uh, right back we go with Gaiganov again it's kind of a, a fairly standard kind of back five with the exception of the left back position in centre mid for today's game we are actually going to be playing mini Mosca at centre mid defend of course a player who last year showed a lot of promise until breaking his leg going to be giving him a second chance I want to give him the first team football to develop and uh, looking at this guy he's a very very good kind of defensive midfielder 15 tackling 15 technique good passing he's a really good deep line playmaker but he has really good defensive qualities and that's what we're going to be looking for from him today the 21 year old anyway alongside him in centre mid we go with Joe Bouchard the Canadian not a lot you can really say about this guy just holding down that first team spot as kind of the real playmaker in our side out on the left we go with Paul Smith in his uh, more natural position as the left winger a position that really over the last kind of season or so he hasn't played perhaps as much as we're used to seeing if you were to compare kind of the last few years to kind of the eight or nine years prior uh, but of course the Australian very capable of playing down the middle now but today we're going to be playing him out in that natural uh, wide position out on the right hand side a player who doesn't really get enough praise I don't feel Junior of course a player we signed last year the Brazilian and uh, he's been a very, very good play. Last year, you know, he got 23 assists and 12 goals, was a top, top individual. And uh, yeah, he's a very, very good winger. You know, he doesn't have the explosive pace that perhaps you expect in a winger. But I do feel like he is more than kind of capable of playing this kind of wide kind of midfielder role. And uh, really just being a great out ball for the team. He's very good technically as well for a winger. I feel like a lot of times with wingers, they're very one dimensional. You know, they have pace, they have the ability to cross and that's that. Junior, you know, he can also play centre mid. He has very good physicals. His mentals are incredibly well-rounded. Hopefully he can give a good performance today. And uh, our front two for today's game, if you include the centre attacker mid as one of the front two, we have Sebastian Girard, of course, the Belgian beast. And uh, alongside him playing just ahead of him, we have Guendouz, again, his Belgian comrade. I'm hoping these two guys can really uh, have a great partnership today. Of course, we are still without Mosca, but these two players, they, they complement each other so well. You know, you've got uh, Gwendouz, who's a very physical kind of out-and-out -out striker with a little bit more aerial ability. And then you really have Se Sebastian Girard, a technically gifted player with some really, really good pace. Anyway, that's our team. We go into this game against Porto. They're expecting to play a similar shape to ourselves. They're a pretty good team, FC Porto. Uh, I mean, if we look at uh, past meetings, we've actually won two and drawn once against them. So we have, we have the record going in our favour. That said... I do feel like they're going to be a pretty tricky team for us to take on today. Looking at the odds, we are considered favourites. I guess that's perhaps due to our squad being a little bit better. Apparently, Porto missing out a few players and uh, have a few players injured. If we just look at their key players, they've got here Sebastian uh, Santin, who looks like a really good little right back for them. Amazing mentals, a little bit like Giganov in some ways. Uh, also has some really nice pace. He's a, definitely a player to keep an eye out on. 
Uh, we'll have a look at their lineup in just a second. They've got Cristiano up front, actually a player who I think I looked at. If he played for Gremio like seven years ago, he's a player I looked at. Okay, he is. Um, I remember this guy because he went to Fenerbahce and I was really annoyed about it a few years ago now. You can see, played for Porto for the last few years. His goal scoring record's been a, perhaps, I don't want to say underwhelming, but four goals in 19 isn't great. He has got four though in three games so far this year. And he is a very good striker, this guy. Very good kind of pace, good kind of technical ability. But uh, he could be a bit of a handful for us. So yeah, Porto, they've got a good team. They are, of course, the number one seeds in this group. I believe that's off the basis of the fact Portugal are a top four, uh, top four, top eight nation uh, in Europe because of the way the seedings are done. I believe the first seeds are like the champions. No, that can't be right. I was about to say, I, I thought the first seeds were the champions of every single domestic league. Is that the case? I feel like it might be, but that just doesn't seem right. It doesn't feel like that's how it should be done. Either way, let's not dwell on it too much. Paul Smith, straight from kickoff. Why not? Gwen Doos. Nice header. Good opportunity. Porto keeper with the save. 30 seconds gone, though, and some immediate pressure, which is good to see. And good to see Paul Smith, you know, immediately in amongst the action. Hopefully he can do more of that, the captain, out on the left wing for us. Of course, we are at the Space Park. This being the opening game of the Champions League group stage, you want to get off to a good start. It's worth noting uh, Everton. Oh, OK, well, we've got off to a good start here. One goal. After two minutes, I was about to mention the fact that Everton, I just saw pop up in the top right, scored against FC Copenhagen after two minutes. You can actually see the league table here. I've got that left open from the replicating Ranieri save I've been doing. We don't need that up for now. Let's, um, let's close that. Paul Smith, though, involved in the build-up play, and it's just a really nice ball. Sebastian Girard just arrives late, squeezes between the two defenders, and slots it home. A really nice finish for him. And uh, pretty much the ideal start, really. Cannot complain one little bit about how things have gone so far for us. We've got the early goal. Paul Smith has looked very lively. And we're on the attack again here. Sebastian Girard, the goal scorer. And it's Smith at the back post to make it 2-0 after 8 minutes. What an early start to the game. This has been Junior out on the right with the assist. Linking up with the, the winger on the far side. And it all came from a relatively short throw in. Gai uh, I was about to say Gaikinov with the throw. It was Gaikinov with the throw. Then Girard with a nice little turn. And the ball just kind of got to the back post a little bit easily there. And, uh, well, Paul Smith said thank you very much and slotted it home. Really can't um, fault the team for this opening to the game. Copenhagen tying up the game against Everton. Of course, I feel like those two teams should be fairly beatable. It's worth noting, however, despite us being the number two seed in the group, Everton did finish second in the Premier League. So they are a good team. But, uh, I mean, we're performing very well right now. It could have been free. Junior with the effort. Really built, good build-up play. I think Mini Mosca involved there, which is good to see the 21-year-old. Um, you know, perhaps playing slightly out of his comfort level against a team with the quality of Porto. Um, but, I mean, it's been the the perfect game so far, as far as I'm concerned. If we could get one more before half-time, brilliant. If not, 2-0 is a very, very good result to have at half-time. And it's been very, very comfortable. You'd have to say there's a lot, not a lot I can really say to the boys here. Gwen Doos has had a little bit of a quiet game up front. Might take him off for real though with a little bit of time having gone in the second half. But right now at 2-0, it's just been a bit of a textbook's performance really. And while we're on the attack again here, Mini Mosca, number 34. Can he find the pass ahead of him? I mean, where's it? Where's he going? Don't give away the ball, Mini. He's given away the ball. It's a bad situation now. Cristiano clean for on goal. Ludwig Young with the save. I mean, I was building them up. I said his name before the save was made. That's how confident I was right there. It's a beautiful little save. Cristiano bottling it, I think it's fair to say. And um, this has been a really impressive performance so far for us. I feel like we can maybe afford to make a few changes in the next five or ten minutes. Um, but actually, we're still on the attack here. I feel like this is a pointless highlight, but I want to be wrong. Bouchard up to Girard. Whip the ball in. He can't get there. He's not that fast. 20 acceleration, 18 speed. But he can't get to that one. Right, do I want to change anything here? I'm thinking about taking Mini Mosca off for Volsky. Let's wait, let's wait, because we might score another here. Graffite, the left back, not the starter normally. Bouchard lays off Gwendouz and Gwendouz scores. Well, I was talking about subbing off Gwendouz. Let's scrap that plan. He's just got a goal. It's 3 0. And you'd have to say, it's been very comfortable. It's been a really impressive performance. Bouchard, little nod down to himself, threads it through, and Gwendouz, first time, slots it away. Keeper questionable. I think perhaps the first time shot caught him out a little bit. But um, this has been just a textbook performance. This is how you want to start a Champions League group stage. You want to take on the number one seed. You want to be playing at home. And you want to crush them. And, well, we are crushing them now. Gwendu scores again. I was about to take him off at one point. He's now got two for the game. He's on a hat-trick. And um, it's a throw in there. And it's really sloppy play. Romario just not paying attention. Gwendu's nips in, steals it. 
And it's a really good composed finish by the 20-year-old. A beautiful finish stroke tome. Had no support. Had to go it alone. And well under perhaps a little bit of pressure from the defenders chasing back. He's come good. We want five. We want five. This has been such a good performance. A sad. It's up to Gwen Deuce. He's on a hat-trick. Can he get it? He can get it. What a hat-trick, my son. A second-half hat-trick in, well, no time at all, really. He scored in the 64th minute, and he scored in the 51st minute, or 52nd minute. It's a 12-minute hat-trick for Gwen Deuce. Big ball all over the top by Jorge Assad, former player, of course, based in Portugal, playing for Braga. And Gwen Deuce, I mean, fair play, son. Fair play. I mean, I, I doubted you. I was worried. You've proven me wrong. Going to make one change here. We're going to take off Mini Mosca and bring in Volsky, I think. I don't feel like we need to make too many changes. That's just been such a fantastic team performance this game. The only player with not an 8.0 rating is Young in goal. But he hasn't had anything to do to deserve a high rating. So I don't even know if you can really give him one. Either way, we're on the attack again is Girard. Oh, Gwen Du's almost scored again. He almost scored again. Who needs Mosca? Who needs Mosca? Like, who is Mosca? Some, some Brazilian striker in our reserves last time I recalled. Um, wow, this has been an incredible performance. I almost want six. Is that greedy? Am I allowed to want six at this point, Junior? Bouchard, options on ahead. Sebastian Girard, Junior can't get there. Apply some pressure, though. Volsky wins it. Smith, Girard, that looked like a foul. It's not a foul. It's been it, It's gone straight to their keeper. I don't know if that was the chance. It's kind of bizarre, this game. It's 5-0. We've only had two clear-cut chances. We've just taken everything that comes our way. And we've hit the woodwork twice. Like The woodwork has perhaps saved Porto a little bit from making this really embarrassing. I mean, I don't know. 5-0 is still pretty bad. Young with a nice save. He makes two saves, and it's it's a third save as well. I mean, that's probably going to increase his, <laughs> his rating substantially. I think that was three clear-cut chances or two clear-cut chances for Porto in one highlight. Literally, Young's up, now up to a 9.0. I mean, I can eat my words... Let's make a sub. Let's give um, Gwen Du's a little bit of a stand innovation. And let's also take off Bouchard, who is on a booking for JJ. There's no point in risking it with two minutes left. I mean, the chance of the selling off happening, slim to none. But but why risk it? Why risk it? That's going to be game. 5-0. What an opening performance. I mean, that is going to terrify Everton, who we have in the next game. Because, well, although they finished second in the Premier League... I mean, they can't have anticipated a performance like that. We have bullied Porto at home there. Everton won their game... Um, but yeah, wow, what a performance that was. I mean, Gwen Du's the, the man of the match. The man of the match by a massive margin. I mean, wow. I mean, he's, he's not even great. Like, I, I want to say he's not even great when it comes to his attacking prowess. I mean, he has got 15 finishing, 15 composure, and 13 off the ball. They're definitely the three kind of attributes of his I really hope improve. But he's got such great physicals, such great ability in the air. The, um, and good, good mentals as well. He doesn't necessarily need to be a finisher. That was an incredible hat trick by him. Either way, I'm I'm getting like all caught up in the moment of this five 0 result. We've still got another game to play. Let's get into it. It's going to be against Everton away from home at Goodison Park, I assume, unless they've moved park stadiums, which they haven't. It's in just over two weeks' time, or just under two weeks' time. I'll see you for that. Let's get into it, and hopefully, we can get another five nil. Okay, guys, so we are back here for the second game of today's live com, taking on Everton away from home at Goodison Park. Really hoping we can get a good performance here, not only because I'm a Liverpool fan, but also because it would just put us in such a great position in this group stage, uh, going into the game against Copenhagen, which, I mean, truth be told, is a game that we really should expect to win. You can see Everton won 2-0 against FC Copenhagen, or they didn't necessarily win 2-0, they won by a two-goal margin. Let's, let's take a look at it. We are, of course, in Group G, and... Um, I don't know. I feel like we've been pretty fortunate with this group draw, but at the same time, we do need to capitalise off it. Uh, it's going to be kind of a big, big competition for us, this. And, you know, after the disappointment that was last year in the Champions League, really keen to put that behind us and really push on this year. That's got to be the goal. You can see uh, five goals scored, obviously, for us. Zero against Everton actually beat FC Copenhagen only 4-2. So that's a little bit underwhelming for them. If we take a look at this Everton side, though, uh, I believe they finished top four in the Premier League the last three years. That they have. Uh, Sergei uh, Reb Rebov? Reb we'll go with it. Rebov. Um, their manager. I can't say I've heard of him. Ukrainian um, manager. 60 years old. Is he an actual manager in real life? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he was playing for Ruben Kazan in 2009, so I guess he is a manager in real life. I don't know where he started, uh, and we're not going to waste too much time looking at it. We will just have a look at Evidence's key player, which is this guy, Kars Van Gant, or Von, Von Gent, Jack Reed, please. He's Dutch. He's 22, a very good centre back. A player who actually looks like the kind of player I'd like to sign if it wasn't for the fact that we have two outstanding centre backs of our own. 
So it looks like they've got a, a fairly strong side here. If we just take a look at their, their team, big earners, uh, they've got this guy, Labasti. We'll go with that. He's French, 33 years old. Looks like a pretty good player. He's done almost £200,000 a week, which seems a little excessive. Looks like he's going to be kind of the, the striker to worry about in their team, I guess you could say. Either way, another player they've got here, Zumbi, who is uh, Brazilian and uh, 25 years old. Looks like a really good defensive midfielder. I feel like I may have looked at this guy a few years ago now um, when I was looking for kind of a really good defensive centre mid for our team, but I think he elected to go to Everton instead. So hopefully in today's game we can kind of um, prove a point that perhaps he made the wrong decision to go to them. Either way, for today's game, we're going to stick with the Porto system. We're going to go with the 4-2-3-1. In terms of the team, I'm going to bring in Volsky to play centre mid defend for us. Whilst he isn't necessarily as good as Mini Mosca when it comes to his defensive capabilities, he's just a very good, well-rounded centre mid. I think he'll be more than adequate to kind of slot in today in that centre defensive mid role. They have a little change, a little bit harsher, I guess, on Gwendouz. Uh, but Mosca is going to start today up front. The Brazilian, 24 years old, back from injury. Hopefully he can give a good performance today. His condition isn't great, so will probably come off before the end of the game. But nevertheless, I think he's very capable of, you know, putting in a top, top performance, hopefully for us today, bouncing back, of course, from injury. Either way, looking at it here, Everton made the favourites. Mosca considered our key player. Van Ghent considered their key player. Uh, apparently, Gibraltar Apex are going to find themselves up against a team who are on good form. And, um, well, it's predicted that it's going to be a draw. Apparently, Cabaselli and Conte... Uh, being injured for either side is going to be a big miss. It looks like Honte here, a really good Italian centre-back for uh, Everton, out with a broken leg. That is pretty bad. He's, it looks like he's their big earner as well. Of course, we are missing Cabaselli, but uh, we have a more than adequate replacement in Graphite to come in for him. Anyway, these are the teams. You can see they're going with a more defensive 4-3-3. We're going to play on the front foot. We're going to try and do exactly what we did against Porto. More of the same, please, boys. And uh, yeah, let's see how we get on here. Of course, a win here for either team is going to put them in such a great position, particularly ourselves, as of course Everton still have Porto to play twice. But if we were to win this game, we would just be kind of booking our seat in the, in the knockout stages of the Champions League very, very early. And I'm hoping that we can definitely do that here. Anyway, Everton on the attack. Of course, they are going to have home advantage going their way. Um, but I don't know, after that last performance, I feel like our team has a lot of confidence. You know, we're playing very much the same system we played before. Hopefully it can work as effectively, although it's going to be a slightly different beast this game. Either way, we do have the ball here. Gaikinov up to Junior, to Girard. Can Sebastian Girard work some magic? Lays it off to Mosca. Girard through. What a goal that is. Can we... I'm applauding it. Girard and Mosca. What a strike kind of partnership that was. A great little move. Kind of the give and go by Girard. Mosca just draws in two men. Lays the ball off. Waited perfectly. And Girard's finish was more than up. Uh, it's the standard of the build-up play that preceded it. You can see a Mosca threaded through, draws both centre-backs, turns, second touch passes it. And Girard with a cool, composed finish. What a goal that is. Our two strikers, I mean, I think that is definitely where our team shines. As much as we've invested in our defenders over the last few years, I think having players like uh, Girard... Uh, Mosca and of course Gwendu's like we're just we've got such a great strike force and we're on the attack again here. Junior whips it in. Paul Smith it's saved somehow. Probably should have been two if we're being honest. A really good opportunity for Paul Smith uh, at the back post. Unfortunately couldn't divert it goalwards and well the keeper did, scooped it away. Uh, it was a tame finish in the end and now we need to defend. Can we defend though? Parry blocked, tackled. I mean that'll do. I don't know how it's not gone in, but it hasn't. Can we break? Mosca not going to get on the end of that, unfortunately. But Everton with a clear cut chance of their own, a big scramble in the box. And um, well, I don't know. One nil. It's it's a good performance so far, but it's still very precarious, and the game is definitely kind of very much in the balance. So that is a horrible mistake by number nineteen for them. Gerard is through, and it's a fantastic finish. I did not think he was going to bury that in. Who was that? Cooper, their left centre-back, missing the interception. When when Girard went through here, part of me thought, you don't often see these going in football manager, you know, this wide area. But he hits it low and hard, and, I mean, that's a great finish. In off the inside of the post, or certainly the inside of the side there, it was, it was a great finish right into that bottom corner. And, uh, well, we've capitalised off that Everton mistake and done very well. Georgia Sads picked up an injury. No point in risking him. We're going to bring in Yves Frigere, of course, the Gibraltarian international for a little bit of an appearance. He doesn't make as many appearances as he used to back in the day. We're going to get given a chance here. But we do need to fend here. A sad, nice little block. Can we now break Junior out on this right with a little bit of space, perhaps? Although the ball's still very much deep in our own half. Everton, though, with a very high line. Maybe we can capitalise off that. Mosca to Girard. Can Girard get the ball back? He can't. Zumbi with a nice little tackle there. And now uh, Kosongo 
Bringing the ball forward for Everton. Spread it out to Smith out on this wide uh, right-hand side. Can we deal with it? We can't. Was that an own goal by Mustafa? It was. Ball came in. Mustafa in a little bit of a, an unfortunate situation. You know, he's running to his near post to kind of cut out that pass. Unfortunately, he can't get any meaningful contact to direct it out for the corner. Instead, it's just a glancing header, which Ludwig Young simply but cannot anticipate. And uh, Kasongo's presence in the box, definitely a factor in that goal, but ultimately uh, a, a bad mistake by the centre-back. And at 2-1 at half-time, this has been an exciting start to the game. But um, I don't know, I feel like the team is playing very well at the moment. A few players looking stressed because of my team talk. Who is it who's looking stressed? It's Juni... No, it's not Juni. It's Volsky and Girard. I mean, Girard, you've got two goals, son. You don't, you don't need to worry. You don't need to worry. All I said was that we're underdogs, give the fans a performance to cheer for, but apparently that, that, that was confusing. I mean, I don't know what's confusing about that, but apparently it was. Let's not concede immediately. Was that Mustafa? Nice tackle there. Good to recover at the back. Look at the team performance so far. Very, very good. Paul Smith a little bit underwhelming. And uh, actually, I think that, that almost makes me want to go narrow. The fact Paul Smith isn't quite performing means that we can afford to, you know, make a few changes. We'll bring in Junior to play centre defence in mid. Be charred into roaming playmaker. And um, we'll bring in Gwen Doos, who's a goal scoring machine in place of Smith, who's just been a little bit underwhelming in today's game. He had that chance early on uh, in the first half to make it 2 0 after 10 minutes. Didn't take it. We'll make a change. We're going to go narrow um, just to facilitate for all our players coming on. But we have a lot of strike and kind of firepower now in our team. And hopefully we're going to see that work for us. Nice block. Giganov trying to get the ball forward. Cooper picks it up. Now with Parry, I must admit it's a bit of a risk to go narrow when we've been performing well with the wider system, but I feel like our team can adapt and I feel like best facilitating our players is perhaps better than playing a player out of position out on the left. As Mosca, Fred through Girard, he's on a hat-trick. Can he get it? That's a penalty, surely. Van Ghent with a professional foul. Get him off, ref. I don't know if there was anyone in cover. I mean, it looked like a professional foul. It was a professional foul. He is gone. That was a red card for Carlos Van Ghent, their key player. And that is going to mean that he misses the next Champions League game for them, which is going to be against Porto. Either way, we've got a chance here from the spot to get a goal. It's Mosca stepping up. Can he score? Straight down the middle. Hammers it home. It's 3-1. It's been a really good performance. It's been a tight game, this one. But we have taken chances that came our way. And Girard and Mosca have just been an absolute handful here. Mosca steps up. He hammers this so hard down the middle. The keeper doesn't even move, but it's just hit with so much power. He can't stop it. He cannot physically stop that shot from going in. What a goal that is. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we cannot worry now. We don't need to worry. 20 minutes left. They are down a man Everton. That should be all she's written for this game. You know, if we can get a few more, fantastic for the goal difference. But three points look like they should be in the bag now. I'm kind of hesitant to say it too soon because there is still 14 minutes left, but we've been very good here. That said, Everton on the attack. Smith out on the left. Have I talked too soon? Mustafa, I mean, maybe I have. Maybe I have. I am now nervously going to take a sip of my grapefruit juice that I've got in a mug next to me. I'm scared. They've got their own Smith out on the left-hand side, and the difference between our Smith and his Smith today is that Everton Smith has actually got the ball in, and they've got a goal there. And they're on the attack again. Surely not. Stop it, FM. Junior, nice tackle. Can we just score one just to calm me down? Mosca, a few people surging on ahead. Can he pick out a pass? Junior out to Graffite. Can he whip in the ball? He can't. It's blocked. And now it's a 2v2 here. Who is number four? Asad, I think it is. Please push it. Oh, my God. How has that gone in? How has that? That's an insane finish. But how has that gone in? Ludwig Young. I mean, I don't know what to say, son. I don't know what to say. Oh, I, I've counted my chickens before they've hatched and the fox has got to them here. It's free free. Um, let's change up the system. Let's change it up. Let's, let's push on some men and let's just go for this game now at this point and see what we can do. We're going with a strike force of Gwendu, Girard and Mosca and we're going to go direct and we are going to look... To just try and make something happen here. High tempo, close down more, be more expressive. We have 10 minutes against 10 men to try and, well, get a goal that we really should have. We are pushing a lot of men forward here. Perhaps it's a risk. But, I mean, how have we lost this? We've bottled it. We have bottled this. Oh, dear. Right, well, I, I've counted my chickens before they've hatched. Why the hell did I curse it? I know someone's going to write in the comments you should have gone more defensive. I want to thank Captain Hindsight for that when it eventually comes in. Can we score? Bouchard, last minute. Volsky, it's not going to happen, is it? Mosca, 
Gerard, oh, he can't get there. It's 3 3. That is such a disappointing result. Such a disappointing result. I mean, Everton, to be fair to them, they probably deserve something from the game. And I don't, as I said, I know someone's going to tell me you should have gone defensive. I don't feel like going defensive against 10 men is something that you can ever afford to do in football. Particularly, even when you're winning, especially when you're winning by two goals. Like, if you're winning by one goal, I understand that hesitancy, and perhaps I should have switched at that point. But um, oh, that's so shit. Pardon my French, that is awful. Awful. And unfortunately for us, um, that, that I mean, we're still top of the group, but we're in a bit of a less great position. The sad out for two weeks is a bit of a miss. As I mentioned, we've got Copenhagen next time, so that's going to be something to look forward to. But anyway, I think that's going to be that for that this episode. Next time, we will have a double header against FC Copenhagen. Hopefully, we can just get two wins there. Hopefully, Everton and Porto can get a few draws. That would be fan blooming -tastic. Either way, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. If you have, leave a comment down below. Leave a like, as always. I will see you guys next time for episode 140. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.